I work on, I write a library called Bitvec, and I've been doing it for just over a year now, and it's led me through a really fun tour of the compiler. Uh, some background, I'm a Rust enthusiast. I've been using it for about three and a half years now. Uh, for my day job, I'm a satellite software engineer, so I have to do a lot of stuff that involves uh, low-level uh, performance with the machine and with I.O. protocols. But enough about me, let's talk about my library. So, let's compare two things. Uh, C++ is the language that we use at work because it's pretty old, it's well proven, and it has cool things for working with low-level I.O. work, like bitfield syntax, which lets you define a struct that has its fields not on byte boundaries. It has a library called bitset, which lets you compact uh, an array of bools into a neat format, and it optimizes the st vector of bool to only have each bool be one bit wide instead of eight, and Rust doesn't. So I made bit Bitvec out of two emotions, jealousy, s and everything C++ should do, Rust should also do, and spite, I can do it better. So Bitvec is a pointer to slice of U1. That slice is very important. It takes 67 bits to address a bit, and pointers are only 64 bits wide. Uh, so I can't address a single bit, but I can address a lot of them. So Bitvec allows me to describe any region of memory, even those that are one bit long, which is how I fake having a single bit pointer. Uh, and I can start and end at any bit within a byte, not just the front or end bits in a byte. And I have more power than the C++ libraries do because I let you pick which element uh, U8 through U64 you use as the backing store, and you can bring your own bit ordering, uh, which is more like the Erlang bitstream type, but C++ doesn't do that. How did I do that? The answer is badly. Uh, it, there are a bunch of bit vector crates on crates.io, and they all do that. They're a pointer to a slice of memory, and then they're also an index of the starting bit inside. And that doesn't work because you can't turn that into a reference. So it doesn't fit the rest of the Rust language. It's too big, you can't make it a reference, you can't return it from traits like index, which require returning a reference to your type. So how it does work is, like I said, a pointer to a bit takes 67 bits because you have to address the byte, and then you take three bits to address a bit inside the byte. So a slice pointer has 128 bits for me to work with. So I can take a slice pointer and reach in the guts of it, put the values I want in there, and still pass it to the language like it's a normal reference, and it works with traits. And so that is all the secret. Uh, you can't read that because the projector is too uh, imprecise. But that C++ syntax for if you take apart a slice pointer, you have these two fields are bit fields inside the pointer value. One is all but the last alignment bits long, and the other is alignment bits long. And then the length field is doesn't have three bits. The last three bits address a single bit inside of it. And then I do math to turn those 128 bits into selecting a bit and then doing memory operations with it. And that structure, I can transmute into a reference and pass it around. Uh, so let's talk about memory. So let's say we have uh, these U16s, and all of these are bits that we consider live. And we start here, and we go up here, and then we go to the next one, next one, and we keep going, and we stop there. How do we work with it? The middle two elements are completely owned. You can just dereference them. Nobody cares. These are aliased. Bitvec allows you to create a mutable slice reference to any bits in memory. The slice API has a function called split at mute, which splits a slice anywhere in memory. So this is a really easy way to trigger undefined behavior in the compiler by creating mutable references, one in the slice we're working with, one in the slice we're not, to the same memory, and that's bad. Aliasing doesn't matter. This is something they don't teach you in the compiler, but it's true. Uh, in my multi-threaded environments, I just cast everything to atomics, which are free on x86, and then any operations that affect the memory are guaranteed to read, modify, and write in a single shot before anyone else can see it. So the operations, as far as the slice is concerned, aren't affected by contention. And on single-threaded, if you disable the default features, it uses cell, and then you can't contest it anyways. 
types are just lies. Uh, I don't require that you, if you're using the crate, wrap your type memory in an atomic first, because you just give me an address, and then I reinterpret it according to atomic instructions or according to cells. And this all secretly works in the compiler, because if you take any integer, which happens to be a memory address, I can interpret it as a pointer to U8, and then I can interpret it as a pointer to lies. <laughs> the API looks exactly like the standard library, because every trait implementation and inherent method in the standard library, I re-implemented myself on my types. So all you have to do to use it is take your, the types from standard library and map them to something else. I have raw pointers, which I don't give you because they're unsafe to export. I have slice references, uh, immutable and mutable. I have vector of bool, including the construction macro. I have box slices, in case you don't need to grow it. And I sure would like to have ref counted types. I just haven't made them yet. And there's an issue if you want to take it. Uh, to make it, you just do that. It's incredibly easy. And that's it. <laughs>